Let's get let's get Chael Sonnen's perspective on what is going on here. Okay, this is what John Jones said. I think Chael Sonnen is the worst trash talker, Jones said. Uh, just because a lot of the stuff he says is gibberish. Conor McGregor, when he talks trash, there's a lot of truth behind what he's saying. I think Khabib will be under more pressure just because a very dangerous fighter who usually backs up what he says, whereas Chael Sonnen is a known trash talk. Known to trash talk and lose. Oh, big words from John Jones. That's why Chael Sonnen did not appreciate it. Do we have Chael on the line? Yeah. And Chael is on the line. We got him here? Yeah, he should be on now. Chael Sonnen. This thing. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm good, man. What are you up to? You're working on a holiday. Good for you. Uh, hey, listen, I'm English. There's no such thing as Labor Day. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, um, so just real, real quick. I know it's a holiday, so we won't keep you long. We're, we're just doing our podcast, believe you me. And, you know, our show, it, it doesn't take itself too seriously. So we talk about whatever bullshit we can find, really. And we stumbled across your Twitter page. And, you know, you can't help but notice you have gone on a tirade of abuse towards John Jones. And we were just kind of wondering what the catalyst of that was. And I said, hold on a minute. Let's give him a call. So thank you for being so gracious for picking up. We really appreciate it. But what is going on, my friend? John, John Jones poked the ball. Now he gets the horn. Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to do? I was sitting around minding my own business two days ago, and I come across the headline where John Jones was talking trash about old Chael. So Ooh. I thought, well, if he, wanted to okay. play, if he wanted to play, then let's play. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, yeah, so there's no look. There's no ulterior motive. You guys are fighting for different promotions right now. You are fighting Fedor Emelianenko and, and Bellator, which is, uh, you know, a fight that we are all looking forward to. Um, but you know, you guys do have a history together. Is there any bad blood between you and John Jones, or was it kind of news to you that you saw that he was talking shit? No, it, it was completely news to me. And I will tell you this, and take take this in a little bit different direction, because I don't have a great story here, right? He struck first, so 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 I counterpunched him back sure. many times, but. Uh, I will tell you, it's, it's hard for me to sit back as an observer of the sport. It really appears that John Jones is getting ready to promote a fight. I mean, I haven't seen a guy on suspension really start cutting promos and doing interviews before. And I'm, I'm just purely speculating. But it does look like with, with, with the main event still wide open for the Madison Square Garden card, man, everything looks like whether it happens or not, it looks as though they are planning on John filling that spot. And maybe that's, maybe that's great news. Maybe I'm breaking some exciting news. But that's what it looks like to me. Does anybody disagree? No, 100%. I mean, uh, knowing people in the UFC, speaking to people there, there is talk that he is going to be cleared very soon. So I, I, I think you're right, Taylor. I think that, uh, that, that totally makes sense. It hadn't occurred to me until now. But, yeah, I mean, that totally makes sense. Well, and Mike, I'll add, I'll add this, you know, because conspiracies are fun, so let's have a little fun today. But uh, you've also let's got do this, it. like, mystery. Yeah, you got this weird mystery injury out there with Alexander Gustafson where he's saying it's no big deal, and Dana's like, well, it's a little serious. But the bottom line is Gus is just kind of floating around in this purgatory. If I was to make a prediction, Oh, so I'd you're say saying Jones, John Jones, Jones Gustafson. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, I, all right. Well, uh, you you heard it here first, everybody, and believe you me, fuck Chael Sonnen, we broke it. <laughs> Mike, I got it. Hey, let me throw one more at you just for fun. Now, this was my own one. I tried to get some steam on this, and, and nobody really uh, nobody really bit. And by nobody, I mean I was having this discussion with Helwani. But uh, you want to know who else's time frame matches up just right with John Jones and Madison Square Garden, but it's none other than Anderson Silva. And while a lot Ooh. of people are going to say that that fight is well past its expiration date, BS it is. I mean, not if you're talking about business. If you're just talking about people stopping what they're doing to tune in, they're tuning in for that. Oh, 100%. I honestly believe that Anderson Silva would have to be damn near suicidal at this point in his career to take that fight. But <laughs> yeah. Anderson Silva, John Jones, I mean, come on, who isn't going to tune in and watch that? Um, Chael, yeah. thanks for joining us. You, you're fighting Fedor Emelianenko soon. You beat That's Vanderlei, true. then you beat uh, Quinton Jackson. Now it's Fedor. This is all the pride legends uh, in one. I mean, you must be feeling pretty good about yourself right now. Well, it's a really good opportunity. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not ready to quite uh, say it's a done deal and I'm going to beat him. I can beat him. He could beat me too. And I don't say that anti mm. uh, competitively. I say that from a competitive nature. I mean, I'm working hard every day. I'm, I'm well aware that. You know, he's bigger and brings a little more power than I'm used to, but I, I do think he's very beatable. 
I think he has to knock me out, and I think he has to knock me out with a right hand. Uh, I've never been knocked out. I've yep. been knocked down one time, so I think I got some good odds uh, that I can stop it. But I think it's a pretty straightforward fight and a big opportunity. For my UK listeners, how would you like a free case of craft beer? Well, as a listener of our show, we'd like to thank you for listening. Just go to beer52.com forward slash believe to claim a free case of beer. Beer 52 is the world's most popular monthly craft beer discovery club, searching out incredible and exclusive small batch craft beers from the world's greatest breweries and bringing them back for their members. There's a whole world of craft beer out there, and this is your chance to get on board with discovering it. Every month, focus on a new country or theme, and listeners who sign now will get to discover fantastic beers as part of their Oktoberfest month, featuring German classics such as Rothaus Pills. I hope that I pronounced that right. More experimental beers from up-and-coming brews such as the Chocobar Chocolate Stout, a 7% IPA, 7% <laughs> from BRLO, and an 8% Honigbach. Oh, the Honigbach 8 percent Made using honey collected by hand from beekeepers around Munich. Uh, you'll be able to read all about the beers and learn more about how they became in the 100 paired ferment magazine also included as a listener of the show though you can try your first case for free just pay two pounds 95 postage that's eight incredible craft beers ferment magazine and the snack next day no brainer there's no minimum commitment you can just take the free case try the beers and sort off it's up to you, though, or you could sign up. You can pause, cancel anytime. Beer 52 has a five-star rating on Trust Pilot, so it's easy to see that their members love the service. So get involved, get the free beers. Visit www.beer52.com forward slash believe and claim your free case today. Last time, beer52.com forward slash believe. Remember, that's beer, B-E-E-R, then the numbers 52.com, beer52.com, free case of beer. Okay, let's start the show. All right, fine. You know what, Mike? Fine. I do feel pretty good about myself. <laughs> well, good, good. I, will, I, will I, I was waiting for my... I, I was waiting for my co-host to ask you a question there, just 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 to try and be sharing. But we had dead air. We had fucking silence. Lewis, over to you. Ask the great Chael P. Sonnen a question. Uh, well, first of all, I will say right now, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a nerd. We've had you on the show, I think, one or two other times in the past. But it's always an honor to have you on the show and to have you and the great Michael Bisping having a conversation um, as well. Um, this, this Fedor fight coming up, um, you know, look, it's a really, really tough fight, obviously. But is it something that, do you look at it as sort of being the same caliber fedor as in the past does it mean as much to fight fedor now as it would have in the past man it does it does to me i i get asked that a lot and it always drives me crazy because i i feel as though uh there's a diminishment of of a potential glorious moment that i could have and so i'm always trying to defend the potential glorious moment by talking him up and saying oh he's just as great as mm. he ever was but the truth is man, i don't know i don't have the foggiest idea i never trained with him back then he looked really good on TV back sure. then. I still think he looks good now. I, I, I think there's a little bit more to Fedor's losses. Uh, you know, he has some problems with those really big guys. Bigfoot Silva comes to mind who was able to just kind of hold him down, but Bigfoot cuts to the weight limit, and Fedor's way under the weight limit to the point people have tried to talk him into going down to 205. So, you know, I don't know. He and Mitch Rion fight. They both knock each other down. I mean, it's like as weird as it gets. So, from my perspective, I'm trying to cling to the, the potential glorious moment, but I also don't want to take my eye off the ball. I don't know how to answer it the other way and go, oh, no, he's washed up. Well, what's the point in fighting a guy that's washed up? Hmm. But, particularly when I have, to, I have to fully admit to you, he can beat me. So what am I saying about myself? You know, it's a really hard fight. I think it's a compelling fight. I think if I get on top of him, I don't think he'll ever get up. But I'm not 100% sure I can get him down. I did one face-off with him. I couldn't believe how short he was. He was under six feet tall. He's got one of those tough bodies. You know, Daniel Cormier has that same thing. We're getting underneath him as a wrestler is a real yeah. challenge just because he's, he's just a little shorter and it comes with some attributes. So I don't know. I don't like it when people write him off. I think that it's rude. I think it's really, really rude when someone does it. But I have a hard time getting a fair shake in the media, largely because I, I, I brag so much. And, and, and so they don't, you know, I say so many good things about myself. They don't want to say them about me. And it seems like every time either I beat somebody or I'm getting ready to fight somebody, they diminish the other guy. Yeah. Um, you know, they diminish the other guy so that they don't have to give me my due. And my, last, my last 11 fights were all against world champions. I won eight of them. So I do have a fair level of confidence in, in my abilities, but um, 
I mean, I'm a, I'm a realistic guy. Look, he, he hits really hard, and he appears to be really fast, and I don't want to get hit with that right hand. Mr. Sonner, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm looking at my records here, and I have you as undefeated. So Undefeated. Very strange. <laughs> um, they were all tainted victories that went against me. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, let me ask you, though, because, you know, you're, you're fighting at heavyweight. We've seen you fight at 205, obviously 185 pounds for the majority of your UFC career. Um, what, how do you like fighting at heavyweight, not having to cut weight, you know, walking around, being able to eat what you want? Is there any, uh, any you know, uh, are you going to keep it heavyweight after this tournament's over? Are you enjoying it? Well, yeah, I kind of go wherever I can get a contract and a fight at, and, and in Bellator, they're, they're, they're a little looser with letting you, you know, make a big fight and get outside of your lanes. We're starting to see that with the UFC. Daniel Cormier and, and, and Steve mm. Bay comes to mind. We're starting to see a little of that. But, you know, Bellator was ahead of the curve, and there was a laziness, which comes with a comfortableness to not having to cut weight that I do enjoy. But there was also a, a piece of the discipline and the struggle. And athletically, I was a little quicker. My endurance was a little better when I was at 185. It's you know, and that's a bit, that's a bit of a chore to, to find that sweet spot in the weight. Make sure you have the discipline uh, when you don't have that con- contracted weigh in. You know, it's it's kind of this weird balance. Mm. But overall, overall, I will admit to you that uh, on fight night, it's a tough thing to do. But uh, leading up to it, life is certainly better. So, Chael, last question before we let you go. I have one I more stupid age, one. Man. I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Ask, okay. No, no, no. Ask right. yours first. No, 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 no. no. We'll end it on mine because mine's dumb. So ask what you were going to ask. Yeah. I just didn't want to say it was the last one. Okay, well, of course, we always like to end on a dumb question. So well, well done, Lewis. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, uh, Chael, looking at your Wikipedia page, so are you 41 now? Is that correct? 41 years young, Michael. Yeah, 41 years young. I mean, you're doing great right now. You're, you're having a terrific run in Bellator. You've had a storied career. How much longer are you going to keep fighting, Chael? Or, or do you not give a damn right now? You're not thinking about that. Well, it crosses my mind. There, there was a time in my life where it never crossed my mind. I do have some goals um, that may surprise you, aside from you know just being champion or trying to win the next fight. But I really admire what Randy Couture did. He was one of the guys that mm-hmm. you know we came up in the same gym, and he was in front of me, so I've always looked up to him. And he fought until yep. he was 47 years old. You know, Mike, you fought uh, Dan. I think Dan was 46 at the time. But I yep, admire yep, those yep. goals. I really admire those guys that were able to extend their careers. Bernard Hopkins and, you know, George Foreman I probably will never catch. But if I could hang in there and, and still compete, uh, you know, in the in the highest organizations uh, late in life, I think that would be a, a really cool thing. Cool. Very cool. All right, final Lewis, question. It, you know, dumb question. A, dumb question. It's not as dumb as I thought because, I, I to be honest with you, I think there's some, there's some legs to this. How do you think, if at all, even slightly – that Joel Edgerton's character in Warrior was based off of you, because I'm telling you right now, it's you right there. I just see it. The whole the way he walks, the way he fights. You know what? I have not seen that movie. I have on demand, so I could watch it tonight. And you just inspired me to. I will. So I'll have to get back to you with that. Can I make a prediction though before I go? Since you guys are so rudely kicking me off so fast. I will give you this. Prediction. No, 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 no. I of course, have... <laughs> Le- Le- uh, Chael, Chael, you can stay on here as long as you like because uh, we do this all the time. And I have a lot of things to say, and I have a terribly sore throat right now. You could probably hear. Don't so ask you, what he was doing. Feel free. I feel will, free. I will give you this prediction. So, quick story, but I'm at the uh, I'm at the T-Mobile. I'm minding my own business, doing a rehearsal up in the ESPN booth um, with my partners, Gil and Ariel. We're looking down at the Octagon, okay, day, day before. Uh, actually, day of. Day of before the arena filled out for, for Stipe versus Cormier. And Bisping's in the ring with Kenny Florian, and so I'm watching these two play around, which, of course, escalates a little bit. But my point is this. Michael Bisping has not gained one single pound since his retirement, which never happens when fighters retire. I then talked to my boss at ESPN, who had been to the gym that morning at 6 a.m. and said Bisping was in there working his ass off. I think Michael Bisping's coming back. That's my (laughs) prediction. I don't think Michael Bisping's retired. (laughs) <laughs> Chael, I wish I wasn't retired. I really do. I mean, I miss it. I love it. I, I can certainly do with the money as well. Um, I am not coming out of retirement, but I appreciate the kind of things you said leading up to making that statement. I do. What See, about, the thing is now... What about oh, grappling, though? This, what about where grappling's yeah. going? There's all this Polaris and whatnot. Isn't that take place in England? I mean, those guys must be calling you. 
Yeah, no, for sure. I actually just got an offer to uh, compete in the grab in Polaris, I think, in December at Cage Warriors. And, and they asked me again in the summer. It's, it's just a case of have I got time to dedicate myself because I don't want to go up against a world-class grappler, go in there half-cocked and not train for it, and then diminish my reputation. I lost the belt, and then sure. I retired, then I get beaten grappling, and then all of a sudden I, I was always a joke. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, I would love to come out and of retirement. But and what I was going to say. That is exactly yeah, no, for sure. they are so ruthless. Exactly. That's how they, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be like, he was never that good in the first place. He won the <laughs> belt by a fluke. He goes and grapples someone we've never heard of and gets choked out. He was always terrible. So I'm not willing to do that for, what, $10,000? It's not worth it to me, you know? Um, sure. But the thing is now, because the reason I work out a lot is because I don't have training camps to get back in shape. You know what I'm saying? Whereas in the past, I could afford to step off the diet, be lazy, but then I do a training camp, lose 20 pounds, look great again, and feel good about myself. Now, unfortunately, there's no more training camps, so I've had to make some changes in my life, lay off the booze a little bit, and uh, not eat so much pasta and pizza. You know, hey, I'll tell you this, too. Grappling's getting to a really weird place, and by weird, uh, I mean that in a positive terms. But are you following this guy? Uh, his name's Craig Jones, this Australian grappler. No, no, never heard of him. Okay. Uh, I w you got to go look him up. So, so the biggest name in grappling right now is Gordon Ryan. But I will tell you, his number two is Craig Jones. And they've actually met up a number of times. And it's as close as can be, overtime and this and that and the other thing. But these are the two guys. I ran into Craig Jones at Abu Dhabi. I wrestled him. I was in the absolute first round. And the reason I tell you it's weird is the guys that used to do grappling and you get Abu Dhabi would be a great example. But they were all aspiring mm -hmm. MMA guys. So it was about getting on top, or if you were on bottom, being like Michael Bissing and be able to get yourself off the bottom, either back to your feet or scramble on top. And he's one of these guys, you can tell, he's not thinking MMA at all. He's pulling guard, he's pulling half guard, he's happy to lay down there, but then he's got a book of tricks like you've never seen before. And it's just fun. I, I guess that was just my point. If you do get into grab, <laughs> Oh, just is he gone? To do think grab. Yeah, I want to say he's like 24 years old, but I mean, I, I went with him. He turned me every which way but loose in about 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. And one of the cool things about him, he got me in a heel hook. Well, you know, he could he could really screw me up. And he did sure, not. Absolutely. He knew he had me and he just stopped. Yeah, he actually took on Jake Shields nice. and did the same thing, this nasty heel hook. And a lot of those young guys would love to get a name off, you know, maybe myself if that's not too arrogant, or Jake Shields. He let us both go. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which was cool. Nice, that's nice, the main nice. thing about grappling, man, some of those guys, they, they don't understand that oh, yeah. we're in there to have fun. For sure. I, I, we're in there I, to I mean, me, the show. Yeah, me and you both know. I mean, a nasty heel hook, that's it. You know, you, you're going to have you're a lot done. of problems for at least six months of your life, you know, and it just ain't yep. worth it. Not, not to me, it isn't, but uh, I do miss it every day. In fact, I'm going back to jiu-jitsu on Wednesday. So you never know. You never know. I might be there. Contrary to everything I just said, if I, get, if I do okay on Wednesday, you never know. But listen, Chael, thank you so much for calling us. We just thought we'd okay, call okay, you on wait, a whim. This really is Pre my last question. My last question. Mike, get, give me the insight. <laughs> go, go. No, no, wait. Uh, Chael, I Chael, I stay I as long as you want. Go. Okay. Just give me this. What is the inside scoop on Dominic Cruz? Is he, is he coming back? Is he coming back soon? Is he all healed up? We had him on today. It, it's funny. What's, yeah, what's we the just word? had him on a moment. What did he say, Lewis? I mean, he so he, he said he'll be back That's before the end. We just had him on the show before you, Chael. Um, and uh, he said he's going to be, he's trying to be back before the end of the year, wants a TJ fight, um, really pushing for the TJ fight, will fight anybody, but really not interested in mentioning any other names except for TJ. And I think me and Mike both agree, and I'd love to get your opinion on this. Yeah, that's the fight. You want to build a hundred stories at 135 pounds. You want people to get emotional about it. That's the last fight that TJ lost. That's the only fight, in my opinion, that anybody's going to really give a shit about. Yeah, 135. I, I hear your point in that. We've seen that round robin now for a couple of years between Cody and, and TJ and Dom. So I get it. I mean, let's finish that thing up. But uh, it did it did seem mm. to me like Cejudo and, and TJ were getting some pretty good traction with the media. I saw him on TMZ, which is a big opportunity. And it seemed like there was a little fire growing there. It's, mm. it, it's dimmed maybe over the last couple of weeks, but I'm a, I'm not totally bearish. I think that that fight may happen too. But I, I like TJ and Dom. You know, I like TJ's response to Dom, where he said, "Well, that's a cowardly way. How about you fight somebody and earn it? Go go take on 
you know, uh, Marlon first and see me after. I, I, I like that. I like when TJ gets salty. I think that TJ is underrated. I think when you talk about the pound for pound best ever, I think that Dominic belongs in there. But I think TJ does too, man. I'm blown away with that guy. That guy is so good. And you, you know, you mentioned uh, Cejudo uh, coming up and possibly um, fighting TJ. Do you think that hurt DJ? Demetrius Johnson by never kind of coming up or not even not coming up, but avoiding it altogether. He was asked multiple times and he was like, Oh, I want to be, I want to get this record that didn't really mean much. Do you think that hurt his, um, you know, cause you see the, the pay-per-view numbers, but do you kind of think that that hurt his sort of like marketability or whatever you want to call it? I scratch my head with Demetrius a lot. I, I, I'm in awe of his skills, but as far as how he managed his career, I, I do see some misses there. Look, he got called out by TJ. Now they're going to fight on the same card. They're licensed. They're both there together, and they're going to walk out, you know, two interest songs apart. It didn't make sense. Under playground rules, Demetrius loses that fight. TJ was willing to show up, and Demetrius wasn't. I didn't understand that. And uh, and then even after he lost to Cejudo, it would appear that he's going to get an immediate rematch. The fans were going to talk about it. It was this awesome fight that people weren't expecting to be an awesome fight. Everything was right. And DJ passed on it. He goes, you know, why don't you do uh, TJ and – and uh, uh, Cejudo, let those guys figure it out. Let me heal up a little bit. I just thought it was a missed opportunity, you know, but he looks at it a little different. He's not as, as rough around the edges, you know. This thing and I are rough around the edges. We, <laughs> we would have been demanding that rematch, but he just is such a nice guy. I mean, what do you want to do? You want a guy to go be a prick if he doesn't want to – you can't make him. So uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I thought that that was a big miss on his part. I also think that he underestimated the pay. You know, he was going to fight over pay. But I think that he, he miscalculated how many of us really wanted to see that. I think he would have ended up with the money he wanted. Mm. Uh, I think for, us fans would have tuned in. For for real, last question here. Um, okay. Uh, what do you think this weekend? <laughs> Huge fight this weekend. Hey, I love this weekend. I love this weekend. I, uh, I'm a big Tyron fan. I think Tyron gets misunderstood a lot. I think that his confidence comes off as arrogance. I think when he makes statements, he's usually on the right side of the argument, just says it in a way hmm. that fans turn away from him. But I think that Darren Till's got this skill set, man. He's weird. It's like Wonder Boy and Connor kind of put together into his own thing. I've never sparred with anybody mm. like Till. I don't have any partners that can do what he does. I mean, that's a hard guy to prepare for. Tyron seems to always be up for those challenges. I don't think we're going to see any drama around the way in as a lot of people think. I don't think Usman's going to no. be able to slide in there. I think Till makes weight for sure. Uh, and I think we get a good fight. That's that's really all I think. I'm not ready to make a prediction. I don't. I really don't have one. And not from a, a point of cowardice. Sure. I just go back and forth on that, man. It's a really tough contest because Till's so weird. But Till, Till is so awkward. He is very awkward, and I don't have a prediction either, but mine is from a point of cowardice because if I pick against him, then England will write me off, and if I pick against Tyron Woodley, then I'm going to get a ton of shit <laughs> yeah. at Fox. So I'm just, I'm just sitting sit? on the fence. What do you sit at the desk? Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence and letting you take over, but Chael, you are the man. We, we all love you over here at uh, Believe You Me. Thank you so much for taking the time, and if you don't mind, we'll do this again soon. You guys are awesome. Kaboom. Let's do it in person in New York. When you come to New York, uh, Mike, let's try to make it so that you're in town as well. I'll and, be there. And get a podcast in studio. That'd be he, great. He already hung up. Well, fuck <laughs> us. You know what? <laughs> <laughs>